Hey, what's going on, Old Nation? It's CJ Wilson here with Dope Talk. Got some recruiting nuggets coming up for this huge Miami game. This is a huge weekend for recruits, man. I'm telling you, the list I'm about to go over is crazy. There's over 100 recruits that's going to be in Tallahassee for the uh, showcase against the Miami Hurricanes. Of course, I'm not, to go over, not going to go over every recruit. I want to highlight a few and talk about some that um, should be, well, not should be, that are important to FSU. On the Trail is brought to you by Realtor Jewel Paul. Jewel is a realtor in southwest Florida, but services the entire state of Florida. Um, if you're trying to buy your home or sell your home, Judah's your guy. Like I said, if you're trying to buy your home or sell your home, um, Judah's willing to donate 20% of the closing costs back to you. So again, if you're trying to buy a home and sell your home, 20% of the closing costs will go back to you. And Judah's a big FSU fan, right? So knows how to take care of knows. So again, if you're trying to buy your home or sell your home, um, Judah's willing to donate some of the proceeds to the Battles In Collective. We know we got to get our athletes paid and we got, um, you know, Battles In is, is a big key to FSU in regards to getting the athletes that we currently have on campus and recruits as well. So again, if you want to um, contribute to FSU and contribute to the cause, um, like I said, go ahead and purchase or sell your home through Jude and he will donate portions of the proceeds back to the Battles In Collective. You can contact Jude at www.homesfornose.com. All right, let's jump right into it. Like I said, there's going to be over 100 recruits on campus, uh, ranging from the 2024 to the 2027 class um, for this Miami game. I'm going to highlight that some some recruits from the 2024 class and some recruits from the 2025 class. Let's start off with the 2024 recruits. Number one player in the country, um, long time need for well, I guess a big time need for FSU and you know a wish list for fans rather. Jeremiah Smith, five star receiver out of Chaminade. He will be on campus again for this Miami Hurricane game. Um, he's been on campus multiple times throughout the summer, things like that. FSU is a steady in this recruitment. He is currently committed to Ohio State, the Buckeyes. But like I say, FSU is a steady in this recruitment. Uh, he does have an official visit locked up for FSU that he plans to use in December. Dynamic playmaker, big time playmaker. Probably one of the best receivers we've seen in Florida in the southeast rather in a very long time um, comparisons to julio jones that type of deal julio jones came out 15 years ago so he's that type of talent um coach ron dugas has done an amazing job as far as the recruitment of jeremiah smith it's good to have him on campus for this game he was also in attendance for the lsu game in orlando and after that game he stated that keon coleman is the best receiver in the country and he also said a while ago they feel like mike norvell is the best head coach in the country and lo and behold fsu is a nine and no looking to a go ten and no with the victory of the miami hurricanes so if we can have an impressive showing with uh jeremiah smith as far as the the receivers, Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson, doing their thing against the Hurricanes. I think that will only strengthen the calls for FSU going into that official visit weekend. And we'll see how the chips may land once we get to December. But again, FSU is a steady in this recruitment and definitely a player in the recruitment for Jeremiah Smith. So that'd be something we will watch out for for sure. Let's stick with the receivers, right? Another five-star receiver, Cam, Cam, Cameron Coleman out of Alabama. He will be on campus uh, for the Miami game as well. He's currently committed to Texas A&M. Um, Cam, this is an interesting one. Cam Coleman took a, a lot of unofficial visits to FSU over the summer, even came to a summer camp and worked out for FSU and the coaching staff, a dynamic playmaker. If you guys look at the huddle right there, you can see the ball skills. He's made the first play of his huddle as a one-handed catch. Um, goes up top, high points the ball, big by the receiver. Uh, big time playmaker. He, like I say, he is currently committed to Texas a and but they have been struggling. And now, uh, you know, hell, FSU fans, you guys know, going back to our day, the end days with Jimbo Fisher, rather, and just how how it's a struggle for receivers, you know, within his offense. So I think um, FSU is in a good spot with Cam. Going back to the summer, FSU was one of the favorites, in my opinion. I thought, you know, Auburn, FSU was some of the schools that could possibly land his service. And then he surprised everyone with committing to Texas a and I still think um, those two teams are in contention for Cam Coleman's services, FSU and Auburn. Both of those teams stayed consistent with recruiting him, even though he was committed to the uh, Texas a and Aggies. That didn't slow down either team for recruiting him. He is from Alabama, so you know you got to be worried as far as that. But FSU was in a good spot with Cam. They, like I said, kind of going back to the same thing with Jeremiah. Uh, it's interesting we're going to have both of these guys on campus as well. But going back to the same thing, if we could have Keon Coleman have a monster game and we could have, you know, Johnny Wilson has, have a monster game and a dope atmosphere and dope Camel Stadium and a win, of course, then that could go a long way as far as um, Cam Coleman's recruitment. We'll see how it plays out. But I think FSU was in a good spot. Um, I don't. 
I don't think he sticks with Texas A&M where he lands. It still remains to be seen, but I do not think he sticks with Texas A&M. Uh, so we have two five-star receivers that's going to be on on campus for the game. Coach Ron Dukas is doing an amazing job. Uh, let's stick with the offense, but let's go to the interior, the offensive line. Jason Zandamella, this is an interesting name, right? Um, he's a USC commit from Clear, um, Plays High School at Clearwater Academy. As you guys know, he was teammates with um, current FSU true freshman offensive uh, tackle. Lucas Simmons, and this was an interesting one as well. Um, FSU was the uh, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. The runaway favorite for the for 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 most of his recruitment, and then he took an official visit to USC, and he committed shortly to the Trojans. Trojans after that, Alex Atkins in FSU, even though he committed to USC, they stayed consistent with recruiting him as well. That that they didn't that didn't let them uh, defer them from the recruitment or anything of that nature. So FSU stayed uh, consistent with the re recruitment, and lo and behold, he's on campus for this Miami for this for this weekend against the Miami Hurricanes. Big time player, he is the number one interior offensive lineman in the in the country. Physical kid and the guy we need as far as the um, interior guard position. Just kind of going back to his recruitment as well. Like I said, um, he took the official visit to USC and committed shortly after that. He did have an official visit scheduled to FSU for the end of July or I'm oh, sorry, the end of June rather, but never made it on campus for that official visit. So I say that to say this: FSU still has their official visit for Jason Zandamella in their back pocket. So again, that's going to be great to have him on campus for the Miami game and possibly get him back on campus. Um, in the future for an official visit. If we could do that, I think FSU is in a good spot to possibly flip Jason Zandamella. Like I said, we see the struggles USC has, has has had on the field. Three losses so far within the 2023 season. You see the success that FSU has on the field, um, undefeated at this current time. And then you fast forward to Alex Atkins being the ace recruiter and having a great relationship with Jason. I think we're in a good spot. We'll see how things play out down the stretch for uh, Jason Zandamella. So it could be pretty interesting for the 2024 class. Let's go over to the defensive side of the ball for the 224 class. Some defensive backs, right? Patrick Sertan has been doing an amazing job on the recruiting trail, so we might as well stay with it and, uh, and stay consistent with some defensive backs. And uh, Kai Bates, four-star cornerback out of the Orlando area. Um, this is an interesting as well. 6'1", big, big frame type of corner. He is committed to LSU. Took an official visit to FSU over the summer. Had glowing reviews for the, for the official visit. And now, um, but he did commit to uh, LSU a little shortly after that. This is interesting as well. Like I said, he is from the state of Florida, from Orlando. See, FSU is on the rise. You have a big time atmosphere in regards to the, you know, Miami and FSU game as far as from a recruiting standpoint and things like that. You never know these things could sway, but I like Kai Bates a lot. He was one of my favorite corners within this class that FSU was after, along with a few others. But we'll see how things play out. But to have him back on campus, is very interesting for me, especially how, you know, with him being committed to LSU, that shows that there's still some interest and maybe some doubt in regards to his commitment. Um, and just want a little bit of clarity in regards to FSU and build a little better relationship and um, get on campus for an uh, in-game atmosphere. So we'll see how that, that one plays out. That'll be something to watch as well. This is another interesting one. Defensive back. Shout out to Pat Sertan. Man. He's doing a hell of a job. I'm not sure what he's – well, I guess he's selling DBU, right? FSU is DBU. They put out the best defensive backs. Period. You know, we got Deion Sanders, Jalen Ramsey, Terrell Buckley, uh, Derwin James, Antonio Cromartie. The list goes on and on and on. With Samara Rowe, Leroy Butler. You take your pick. So I say that to say this. We have Wardell Mack. He's going to be on campus as well. Four-star cornerback out of Louisiana. He is committed to the Florida Gators. Uh, he's been – there's been some noise around the UF camp and people kind of close to a situation saying that he possibly won't stick with the Florida Gators. This was interesting as well, too. He was a – kind of shocker commit to the Florida Gators. I know um, he's from Louisiana. I thought LSU would be the team to beat, but long ago, he did commit to the Gators. The Gators are currently struggling on the field. Um, now I'm loving every second of it, right? <laughs> the Gators are struggling on the field. It's been beautiful to watch from my perspective. And so Wardell has been looking around a little bit. Um, he loves the FSU staff in regard F the staff and the players they have on, on, on the team as far as the Louisiana ties, right? His defensive back coach, Patrick Sertan, um, he's from New Orleans. He'll be the, he'll be the guy coaching him. Um, Coach Yak, the recruiting coordinator, New Orleans ties as well. Um, Dustin Hill, New Orleans ties. Um, Keon Coleman, New Orleans. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Um, greedy, 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 greedy Vance. He's from New Orleans as well. So again, it's a lot of Louisiana ties that that has Wardell Mac attention. So we'll see how that plays out. 
um, with the, in regards to his recruitment. He's going to be on campus for this game. We'll see if we can get him back on campus again in December for an unofficial visit. I do believe he did take his official visit already to FSU. That's pretty much all we got for the 2024 class, but we will have K.J. Bolden and Charles Lester on campus. Defensive backs, right? Two five-star defensive back commitments, uh, commits rather, that will be on campus again. I'm pretty sure those guys will be heavily recruiting some of the guys I just named. So, again, like I said, Patrick Sertan is doing an amazing job. We have those guys already committed along with a few others that's going to be on campus, highly regarded players, rather, that that's going to be on campus that we're going to try to chip away at and try to flip those kids. Let's jump over to the 2025 class. Um, the list for this, the list for this, um, the 2025 list is just, it's just crazy loaded, crazy loaded. I'm looking at one, two, three. We, we have six five stars on campus for six of them for this game. This list is crazy. So six five stars are the number one player in the 2024 class and the number one player on the, in the 2025 class will be on campus for this weekend. David Stone Jr., offensive tackle out of, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I think FSU is in a very good spot with him. Um, Coach Alex Atkins has done a hell of a job recruiting him. They have a very good relationship. Took a visit over the summer to FSU and fell in love with the visit. Now, again, like I said, he's the number one player in the country, so he, he's having suitors left and right. And he's going through the process this fall, rather, to kind of weed and, and see different schools and kind of trim that list a little bit. But I do think FSU is in a very good spot for uh, David Sanders. That's because Coach Atkins, we all know the, the type of recruiter he is. He's a great recruiter, great coach, and he relates to these kids. So we'll see what Coach Atkins can do down the stretch. But not down stretch, right? Because this process is really just beginning, going into the spring like that for David Sanders Jr. And also, this is something to keep our eye out on as well. He's from Charlotte, North Carolina. FSU will be playing in the ACC championship the first week in, these, in December in Charlotte. It'll be interesting and something to watch out for if uh, David also pops up for the ACC championship game as well. So keep your eye out on that. Um, five star tight end. Elias Williams from Georgia will be back on campus. Again, this kid has been a steady on campus pretty much all spring, all summer, and he's been to a couple games as well so far this fall, committed to Georgia. But I think that commitment is kind of shaky. I think FSU is in a great spot for Williams. We'll see how things play out down the stretch. Um, but I do think FSU is in a great spot to continue to get him on camp, get, get him back on campus and things like that. We'll see how things play out in the spring as far as getting him back on campus as well. Prior to committing to Georgia, he did say FSU was his favorite and things like that. Then he committed to the Georgia Bulldogs. But I think um, FSU will win out down the stretch for Elias Williams and will possibly get his commitment at some point in time. But like I said, 2025, it's a long ways away, so be patient. But I do think FSU is in a very good spot for Williams. Sticking with some more five stars, um, five-star safety, DJ Pickett, number one safety in the country out of Tampa, Florida. He will be on campus as well. 6'2", 175, big-time playmaker. He's also considering Florida, Oregon, Michigan, and Ohio State. Like I said, dynamic playmaker. He will be on campus as well. It's interesting to see, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, Patrick Sertan, I keep saying he's been home run higher from a developmental standpoint with the defensive backs we have on campus already. And just from a recruiting standpoint, I went over some of the names already. Don't need to keep echoing the same thing, but um, Patrick Sertan is doing a hell of a job. Number one safety in the 2025 class, DJ Pickett. All right, the number one linebacker in the 2025 class. Shout out to Randy Shannon for giving the board a little bit as well. Uh, Zayden, uh, excuse me, Zayden Waller. He's going to be on campus also. Um, this is his seventh visit to FSU, seventh. Only school he's been on campus more is the University of Georgia. Um, you know, Georgia Bulldogs, home state kid, so that makes Lewis, but an unofficial visit for Zayden. Say to how much he enjoyed and things like that. Um, J. Lewis, I think FSU was one of his finalists, but he ended up committing to uh, South Carolina. But nonetheless, I think FSU was in a good spot with Zayden. We'll see how that plays out. Just keep recruiting him and things like that. But, you know, Georgia Bulldogs are... are a team that should be um, a team you should be worried about as well. A team that you should know about as well. In-state linebacker, they do a good job of uh, front seven in Georgia from on a defensive standpoint, especially keeping those guys in state as well. So we'll see how that plays out. Five-star receiver in Alabama commit Jamie Finch from Jacksonville, Florida, Memphis High School. On campus, uh, another guy on campus multiple times. I think even though he's committed to the Alabama Crimson Tide, just keep pushing and keep recruiting him, showing him showing him he's a priority for the staff. I know Coach Dugas is doing a good job recruiting him, and I told you guys a while ago about Mandarin. Um, FSU, we trying to 
playing our flag in Mandarin so in, in at Mandarin High School. So it's going to be interesting how these things plays. I do think FSU is in a good spot for Jamie. Big time playmaker, dynamic playmaker. Um, speaking of moving on to another five star that's going to be on campus as well. Jared Smith, the number one defensive end within the 2025 recruiting cycle out of Alabama. Um, like I said, I'm telling you, man, the FSU is recruiting their ass off. This just simply put, they're doing a hell of a job, especially just laying the groundwork. I told you guys in some other recruiting videos, you're going to see some names in the 2024 class that's going to be on campus for games, but the majority is 2025 guys laying that foundation down, getting that relationship going for the spring and trying to carry those over to the new class. But again, Jared Smith, Dynamic pass rusher, 6'6", 230 pounds. He came to FSU over the summer, worked out as well. Big-time playmaker, enjoyed his visit. But he is from Alabama, so you kind of know how it goes. Alabama Auburn and Alabama Crimson Tide are, are two teams that's involved him as well. But we'll see how things play out. Jerry Smith is a big-time dynamic, dynamic playmaker. He is the number one pass rusher in the 2025 recruiting cycle. Um, and so we're just going to stick um, – excuse me, want to stick with a teammate of uh, Jerry Smith. He's going to be on campus as well. Um, it's – and if I'm if, if I'm pronouncing this, uh, forgive me. Um, and Guan Fegans, uh, 2025 safety, big time playmaker. He's a top 35 player in the country. Uh, had nine interceptions his sophomore year. You heard me right. The kid had nine interceptions as a sophomore. That's fucking unheard of, man. That's insane. You have nine interceptions in any year. That's 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 an amazing stat. But having your sophomore year is a big time, big time. He recently was committed to USC, but he decommitted from USC. Uh, since decommitting, he's been entertaining Auburn, Georgia, Auburn, Auburn, excuse me, Georgia, and Alabama, along with FSU. He is teammates with Jared Smith, so we'll see how that plays out. Like I said, it's a, it's a point of emphasis on defensive backs. Last kid we're going to touch on for this 2025 class, Hilton Stubbs. This is my personal favorite number, uh, my personal favorite safety within the 2025 cycle. I love his love his playmaker ability. Um, dynamic playmaker, sideline to sideline, um, catches picks, uh, makes a lot of plays on the ball when the ball is in the air. Just a dynamic playmaker. And talking to his coach, some of his coaches on the Mandarin staff, the plays he makes in practice are just insane, right? So, uh, Tremel Jones, the uh, 2024, excuse me, 2025 quarterback commit for FSU, um, just frustration in regards to some of the plays that Stubbs makes in practice and his coaches got to let him know hey listen you gotta understand who you're throwing against right there man that's the type of guy you don't you don't see those guys too often so take it with a grain of salt in regards to you know what you're seeing on the defensive side you're playing against the best safety you'll play against probably in your college career um every day in practice like i said dynamic playmaker he's a big time playmaker and he hits you as well he's not afraid of contact um so i like this kid a lot my favorite safety within the 2025 class regardless of rankings uh, another kid from Mandarin, like I said, FSU is trying to plant that flag and um, trying to plant that flag flag in Jacksonville, especially at Mandarin High School. But I do think FSU is in a good spot with Hilton Stubbs. He's been to multiple games within the 2023 season. Um, like I said, I did, I, did, I couldn't highlight everybody because we'll be on here for about two to three hours. But it's been it's going to be a great, great weekend for FSU as far as the recruits over 100. It's going to be some big time blue chip guys. So I think it's going to be a fun atmosphere for FSU. Uh, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. And also, if you guys are pulling up to Tallahassee and Doe Camel Stater for the Miami game, make sure you guys come out to the tailgate. We're throwing a big time tailgate. As you guys know, all our tailgates are pretty good. So come and grab your tailgate ticket. The uh, um, the link is in the description of this video. So go ahead and grab your tailgate ticket. Going to have free food, not free food, sorry. All you can eat food, all you can eat drink, all you can drink and things like that. So definitely come out and hang out with us if you are in town. Again, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. It's CJ Wilson with Dope Talk. Go Nose.